In the 73rd chapter of the Big Bang Theory series, Good Sheldon says that his favorite number is 73 and that it is a unique number, and more things. But is it true that the 73rd is so special? By the way, do you remember of the editorial Shackleton books, we passed the book of chaos and complexity, since it has other books not only of mathematics, but also of science as the science of science fiction, in which they talk about the science behind those movies that I like so much. The publisher is Shackleton Books. You can find it in the bookstores. You can find it on their website. The scene in question is this. Os estaréis preguntando por qué. No, para nada. El 73 es el vigésimo primer número primo. Leído al revés es el 37, que es el décimo segundo. Que al revés es el 21, que es el resultado de multiplicar. Agarraos fuerte. As you can see, Sheldon gives several properties of the number 73 that, it must be admitted, are quite mind blowing. What is most striking is that 73 is prime, and that is the prime number 21, which is 7 times 3, and that also, if we turn 73 is 37, which is prime, and that is the number 12, which is 21 turned around, are surprising properties. Yeah, but is that the only number that has them? That's what the mathematicians Burns, Spicer and Turnquist wondered in 2015 when they defined the two properties of what they called Sheldon's prime number. The properties are Product property We said that the nth prime number has the product property. If by multiplying all its figures the result gives precisely n. For example, 73 fulfills it, since it is the number 21 and the product of 7 times 3 is precisely 21. The mirror property we say that the reverse side of a number is the number that we get with its figures in reverse order. For example, the reverse side of 1234 is 4321. Well, we say that the nth prime p sub n fulfills the mirror property. If the reverse of p sub n is prime and occupies precisely the reverse position of n, for example, the 73rd fulfills it because its reverse is the 37th, which is prime and occupies the 12th position, which is the reverse of the 21st, precisely the position of the 73rd. What Burns, Spicer and Turnquist wondered in 2015 is whether 73 is the only number that fulfills those two properties. And in 2019, Pomerantz and Spicer have managed to demonstrate this and publish it in an article in the prestigious American Mathematical Monthly. In fact, 73 is the only number that has this property. It's as unique as Sheldon says. Okay, but how do you prove something like that? How did Pomerantz and Spider manage to prove that, among all the infinite prime numbers, only 73 fulfills that, that there cannot be any of hundreds of billions of figures that has those same two properties? Well, based on a good handling of the properties of prime numbers and a very good number theory technique, you have everything in the article that I have linked to you in the description, but we are going to tell it a little here. First they show that if a prime p sub n has the product property, it has to be less than 10 or 45. For this they use one of the most powerful and beautiful theorems of number theory. The prime number theorem, which was proved by Hadamard and de lavoisier pausen in 1896, and which says that pi of x grows as x divided by the logarithm of x, where pi of x is the number of primes less than or equal to x. In other words, that the number of primes less than x is approaching x between the logarithm of x as x grows. Pomerantz and Spicer use that in a very cool way to see that there are no prime with the property of the product greater than 10 at 45. Well, it's a breakthrough. You no longer have to look at infinite primes to find another Sheldon prime, but still, 10 to 45 is a lot. That needs to be narrowed down. And that's what they do in the rest of the article. To begin with, 73 is not the only prime who meets the property of the product. They also have it, for example, the seventh prime, p sub 7 is 17, and the prime number 181,440. For p sub 181,440 is 2,475,989. Are they the only ones? Here Pomerantz and Spicer use the inverse of the logarithmic integral to try to rule out other primes with the product property. And although they manage to establish some limits, it is not an easy task, so it's time to explore the mirror property, since a prime of Sheldon has to have both. The next thing they do now is prove that every Sheldon's prime over 10 figures, has to meet a few conditions. That they are couples to the fact of being Sheldon's prime. For example, that its first figure is 1, 3, 7 or 9, that it has no prime factor greater than 7, and so up to 8 properties that are going to help us rule out candidates. To demonstrate these properties, the authors make use of a lot of knowledge of prime numbers and some previous results. 
Well, now they start trying to eliminate all candidates for Sheldon's prime number up to 10 at 45, and they use heavy artillery to set lower levels. They use properties of the Chibushev function and a very fine study of the logarithmic integral to see how the inverse of the logarithmic integral is separated from the nth prime. They use calculation arguments, iterative methods and even computational calculations, and all that to get to the last section of the article in which they go all out. First they search among all the prime of less than 19 figures, and making use of all the properties they have developed throughout the article, they are left with 55,000 odd candidates, of which they discard 7,000 odd, which are less than 10 figures. And there they had already seen that there are only three with the ownership of the product. And using the properties that they have been demonstrating, they are left with 6,000 and odd candidates. They are reducing it until they are left with 309, and they are carefully analyzing their digits to end up discarding them all. So we got off to a good start. There are no Sheldon's prime with less than 19 figures, except for 73. Finally, for prime over 19 figures and under 45, because of 45 or more have already proved that there is no. Again they are using the properties they have developed to go from a million and odd candidates to 112,000, to 900, and from there to 338, who are studying until they see that none of them is a prime of Sheldon, finally proving the theorem. The article is quite a boast of technique and knowledge of the tools of number theory. It is also a good example of a certain type of demonstrations in mathematics. Study properties associated with what we are looking for and try to eliminate candidates little by little. Finally, sometimes you have to use a computer to eliminate some rebellious candidates that the theory fails to master. You see, the peerless number 73 has taken us from a conversation on the couch from Big Bang Theory to a super article on number theory. Sometimes television series take us down unsuspected mathematical paths and then they say that watching series is a waste of time.